Hi, I'm David Lawrence, CEO and founder of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're going to be talking about selecting the right knee or ankle, sleeve or brace. Before we get into that, I wanted to make sure you understand we have no conflict of interest. We have no support from any kind of brace or sleeve manufacturer for any of the work we do. And the information we're going to be talking about is based on 30 years of experience working with patients and on basically opinion. So how these braces work, how they fit well, and our feedback uh, and patient feedback through these years. Really want you to understand that we're not talking about braces in, in the form of brands, more categories. What does that brace going to do? What is the difference between a sleeve for compression and a true brace, which is going to help stabilize you? A couple of things you need to know to get started is always want to consider with your patient, both the pathology and the patient. Uh, what does that mean? That means that the, the patient may want a particular type of brace, but the pathology and that patient uh, interest may not align. I like with every patient to come into a scenario with a good, better, and best solution. A brace that's going to be exactly the best thing they need and something that's pretty good and something that is good but in, and maybe more what they're willing to use. And you're going to understand that a little bit more when I go through some of these braces. You understand the complexity of the brace and sometimes the complexity is just something a, a patient does not want to utilize. So we're going to go through the process and talk to you about that but understand bring in every patient what are the options that are best and can really work for them. Because as you'll hear me here say in a number of our videos there are thousands of braces in closets or dumpsters that are never used. And many of those are because of poor patient selection and or poor fitting. So we'll go through this process and try to educate and improve and decrease that number so the brace you get is the brace that you need. So what do you need to know? When you're working with a patient, what are the, what are the, the processes and, and the ideas associated with that patient that's going to make a difference uh, in getting the brace selection or the sleeve selection correct? And that is diagnosis, for sure, you got to understand what's going on. Do I have an injury of some sort, a cartilage injury, a ligament injury? Do I have an edema problem? Do I have a swelling reaction? What is the diagnosis of what I'm dealing with? What am I looking at as far as in the, the idea of interests and activities? What are they going to do with it? If they're a patient that's not very active, a different type of brace may be the best source for them. It's not as stabilizing, but maybe it doesn't have to be based on their injury or their activity level. History or time within the pathology is vital. Let's say we're talking about someone that comes off a major knee injury and they're going to need a lot of brace early on to get back to activity, but wean down to not needing as much brace later on. So where are they in that pathology cycle and, and the type of brace they need? They may be on the other end. They may have a chronic disease process uh, in which they're on just diagnosed and need very little support right now, but years from now might need something much more stabilizing. So you have to know where they are in that cycle and how are we going to progress them correctly with the correct brace. And then the other issue is this idea of kind of upcoming activities and location. In other words, things that are going on, they have a trip of a lifetime coming up. Well, they might need a particular thing to get through that process, but not something they would necessarily use every day. And then where are they? Do they live in a rural area? Do they work on a ranch or a farm, somewhere where they're going to really put a lot of stress and strain on that device? And breakdown is just not an option. So you may go with something that's the good brace, tried and true, not all the bells and whistles, but if something's going to hold up to their activity level and make sure they can keep doing what they need to do every day. So those are the questions you need to know and those are the questions that you want to address with every patient. Now, let's review then what are our sleeve and brace options. And the big question here is what is the job? What are you trying to accomplish here? Do I have an inflammation, a swelling issue, and all I need is some compression to that? Or am I looking at something that's much more stabilizing? I really need to hold that joint together. So the options are, so let's start with talking about ankle sleeves. So around us here, we have a lot of different options. Something as simple as simply a compression sleeve that wraps around the ankle. And there's lots of different, I call these anklets. And they do a nice job of just creating some compression around the ankle. And there are a lot of times they can either slide on or Velcro opening, either way. But they give you good compression to control edema. But a patient comes to me and says, well, I'm wearing my ankle brace. This is not an ankle brace. They don't want to be fooled to believe this is going to stabilize their ankle if they start to roll it. It's not. It's a compression device. As we move up, up that scale from compression to a little bit more support, this is still more of a compression device than anything else. But there are some stays in the side that make it a little bit firmer, give it a little bit more stabilization. You truly couldn't say this is going to stabilize you against an ankle sprain, but it gives you a little bit more support. So realize there is a 
So there's probably hundreds of different types of ankle compression devices out there that you can look at and see what fits best and what gives you the amount of support that you need. Now, if we go from there and we're looking at then more of an ankle brace, again, there are variations of these braces that come in lots of different formats. This is a most standard version that laces up the front. Now you put your ankle in this and you lace it up, you're gonna get great stabilization. You're gonna really hold that ankle in place and you go to roll your ankle, it's not gonna roll. The brace is gonna hold that ankle together. You can't do more or very highly unlikely to be able to do more ankle damage inside a brace like this. And it locks you up. What does that mean? That means as we've talked about in our brace debate video, you need to have a good local exercise program to make sure you're maintaining your mobility and your strength at the local joint depending on how much you're wearing this joint, this brace. And you don't even want to wear the brace when you need it. If you're not unstable, you want to wear it most all the time. I mean, if you are unstable, excuse me, wear it most all the time. If you're not, you may only wear it for activity. So you want to have that kind of stabilization. Now, let's just say you need some stabilization, but you don't want to be so locked in. Then you look at something like this, in which a brace that has more motion to it certainly not as locked in and stabilizing as, as the last one that laced up, but it allows you to move a tennis player, volleyball player, somebody that has a, an injured ankle, but it's stable enough and I can get out and play, but I need some support. This is a great brace for that or this type and idea. Remember, every one of these braces is depending on the, dependent on the shoe that they go into. So you can't put this on with a croc and run around and expect that it's going to give you stabilization or a flip-flop. You need to have something that's going to be locked in a laced up shoe to stabilize that brace in place. So from an ankle brace, you can go from high activity, less support to the continuum going where we were before, much more support, but less activity as far as the ankle motion and the ankle movement. Now, when I encourage you next to be looking at our are fitting videos for these ankle braces and sleeves because we'll go over each one and putting it on the patient and get a better understanding of how to put it on the patient and what you're trying to get from it on that patient. As we move forward, let's talk about knee braces then because we come up the kinetic chain and we look at knees and we'll talk about knee sleeves first. So a knee sleeve idea is this, this idea of a compression device. They can Velcro open, they can slide on. There's, they're gonna create basically the same type of idea, which is decrease swelling, hold compression, give you a little bit of proprioceptive, a little bit of a postural reminder, but you're looking for stabilization from simply soft tissue, not any kind of support from the side that's gonna keep that knee stabilized when you cut or move or push off on it. But sleeves can be excellent. It's a matter of what are you trying to accomplish and do you wear the, the sleeve correctly? So I also encourage you when we're looking at the, the next videos along the line of this, this idea of knee braces, and fitting of them, how do we fit one for and for what activity and what ideal? So when we go up the chain from just a compression device, we may look at something that's more in the line of a compression device that also has some sort of patellar stabilization. There are a number of different braces out there, both of these kind of in that category, that give you both compression and an external device that you put on the outside of that kneecap and create a pressure to pull it in the direction that you want. These again can work well to give you some compression support and give you a little bit of patellar alignment support. It can be very good and there are multiple different brands and types out there. So if we go from then the compression idea to a true brace or stabilizing brace idea, then we look into the category down here in which we have everything from an elastic, again, compression type brace that has built-in metal stays on the side that are not gonna bend. Those things are gonna give you pretty good stabilization. It's a slide-on, off-the-shelf device. Again, open patella to take the pressure away, but also gives you, can give you good knee stabilization. Remember we talked about that good, better, best? This will give you good knee stabilization, but it's not custom fit to the knee, a little bit short in length, which means not as, quite, as much leverage over the knee, but it can give you stabilization. If we move up the chain from that, we get into a brace that is more frame brace oriented. Now with a frame brace, one of the things you get a much more stabilizing device that can hold the person, usually a little bit longer, so it gives more stabilization. The negative on these devices, if you look at all the straps, there are multiple straps to put on for the patient. 
and they get put on, if you check out our orthotic or brace fitting section, you'll see how we put these on, how we train patients to put them on. But the same way you gotta understand, it's a bit confusing and can be uh, you know, vexing to a patient and have a hard time utilizing the brace simply because they can't seem to get the straps on correctly. But the straps are there and that's what holds the brace in place. Now, if I move up the chain, I can also say, do I need a specific stabilization, like an unloader? This is a type of device that would be to try to unload arthritic compression on one side of the joint or the other. And that can occur two ways, in a dynamic control system that pulls one direction, or in a system that does create compression on both sides at the same time, and the pressure is always there. In a device like this, whether you bend the knee or you straighten the knee, there's always a compression force on the knee. In a brace like this, when you bend the knee, all the compression comes off the, the brace. If you want to see this in action, again, check out the, the uh, um, orthotic brace fitting series on knee braces, and you'll see how we fit this brace and how that looks when someone's knee is straight versus bent. And lastly, you can get into custom-made devices. So when you get into good, better, best, sure, you go into the idea of a custom-made is probably best because it's gonna give you the most stabilization top to bottom and it's custom fit for your leg. But you run into the same issue. All the different straps on this brace is something has, a patient has to understand how to put it on. Again, re researching this idea with the patient and the different braces, but the same idea of checking out our video on brace fitting so that you get the sense of how do you put this brace on correctly. If it is on correctly, it can really work very, very well for the patient. And you have to make sure then when you're selecting it, what am I selecting it for? Am I selecting it for daily use or is this just simply for a sports activity? Every brace, the comfort level and how difficult it is to put on and take off will make a big difference along that line. Now, looking down here from suggestions is where do you go from here? Remember, you're gonna pick the brace for both the patient and the pathology. What is wrong? What will the patient utilize? That's important to understand. Where are they? What's that patient doing at this particular time? How far along on that process? Are they in rehab and getting better and getting away from the brace? Are they coming into a situation where they're gonna need more bracing over time? Selecting the right brace for the patient. Keeps them out of the closet, keeps them on the patient. So what you wanna do is think about selecting the right brace, which is a team approach, right? You really need to get the orthodist involved. You really have to have the doc involved and the therapist, because not only do you have to have the right brace, you have to have the good and correct exercise program around it to make sure you've made the right choice. Thank you for watching, and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation, ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.